night in Bathurst. I understand it's challenging to come out of an evening, midweek, uh, to a very beautiful but sometimes challenging to get to venue. So thank you all for coming to to brave the weather and the and the, uh, the traffic conditions to to come to the C2 Engineering Building tonight to be here for the launch of the Accessible Bathurst project on Everywhere Venues. My name is Zoe Heder and I'm very excited to be the Managing Director of Everywhere Venues and there are lots of great people here tonight. Thank you so much for being here. Um, before I start though, there are a few that I should particularly mention and the first of those of course are my family because it's very hard to achieve anything in business without a supportive family. So. I'm very lucky to have my children here. I've got my parents here. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then my husband's notably missing. He's on a, on a flight on the way to Japan, but he didn't stay right up until this afternoon to get the PowerPoint working. So I do have a wonderfully supportive family. Um, I'd also like to thank my team members uh, on Everywhere Venues. We have Chris Stott, who's here in the room and waving his hand, and Brett Eldershaw, and we have another team member, Jay Reed, who's in Sydney and can't be with us tonight. But if you have any tricky questions about how the platform works, you can go and see either of these guys or myself tonight. We'd love to answer your questions and, and see how we can help you more. Um, some other special people we have in the room, we have Bob Triming, the president of the Bathurst Regional Access Committee, um, who's been really supportive of Everywhere Venues and this project and uh, has, has played a really important role for us in, in developing the accessibility features of every venue. So thank you so much for being here tonight. Of course, I must mention that we are in this beautiful facility owned by Charles Tech University. What a wonderful venue. And uh, hopefully it will now be even more obvious and easy for people to make use of this beautiful space. And uh, CSU has been a fantastic uh, participant in this project as well. Uh, firstly, Everywhere Venues was developed with the ongoing feedback from the Facilities Management Division of CSU and we have some members of that division here tonight including Nick Ranger who Sal and I have sat in front of for hours and hours and hours picking your brains to, to get really you know, valid feedback on how this might work for a large organisation. And we couldn't have done this project without the help of about 20 different CSU interns that have spent you know, hundreds of hours with us in our office helping to bring the project together. So we've been so supported and lastly but not leastly the Send West Innovate program which we've been part of uh, last year and that was a really uh, insightful and helpful uh, foundation for us to build our new business which is Everywhere Venues. So thank you for everyone being here tonight. I'm going to jump straight into my presentation. Hopefully it won't be death by PowerPoint. I'll try and keep it really brief. But if you've got any other questions that haven't been covered in the presentation, please come and see us. We really want you guys to leave here this evening with a good understanding of how Accessible Bathurst works and how it will help people in the community to find venues that meet their accessibility needs. So thank you. Unfortunately, I don't have a clicker, so I'm going to have to keep walking back and forward to get that. So first of all, what is Everywhere Venues? Everywhere Venues and Accessible Bathurst were all about helping people find the venues and spaces that meet, that meet their needs with accurate, relevant accessibility information. We do lots of other things as well, but this is really a core part of what we do, and this is really the foundation of the Accessible Bathurst project. Can you just tell me what's speaking of? That one. I now have a clicker. And Accessible Bathurst, um, this has been very generously funded through Fundability. It's a grants program uh, organised by Northcott and through the New South Wales Department of Family and Community Services. And we're working with lots of NDOs providers in Bathurst and some of, some of them are here in the room today. So we've got Accessible Living Options, Verto, Vivability, Glenray, Live Better, the Seymour Centre, We've got a few more. We'll find out when we get to the all of their logos on the back. But we've had so Marathon much. Health. Sorry. Marathon. Marathon Health. Yes. What beautiful spaces you have! I took photos of them last week. So we've got so many wonderful NDIS providers who are part of the project because they really need this information. Before you can take your client somewhere, you need to do an audit of the accessibility features of a venue. So. These organisations need this information for when they're actually serving their own clients, but also they have a 
a lot of this information, you know, in their own offices, in folders and binders and in different places in their heads. What we're trying to do by working with the NDIS providers in Bathurst is to get all that information out of their heads and onto our platform so that the families of these people who need this information can find it freely available online. We're also working with the Bathurst business community. We have Steve Harper from the Bathurst Business Chamber and quite a few of the people in the room are also members of the business chamber. And we're working with local businesses that own venues to actually get their venues online and map them out with accurate information. And we also have people in this room, and I think many of us can put our hands up to this one, is we're people who care about inclusion. So our goal here is to get as many venues as possible in Bathurst listed on the platform with full accessibility information so that anyone can find this information. So the, the main reason we need to talk about accessibility is because accessibility matters. Because accessibility doesn't relate to just one small section of the community. Accessibility relates to everyone. If any one of us tr twists our ankle, we have an accessibility need. If any one of us has another baby or becomes a grandparent, and we're all of a sudden we're pushing around a pram, we have an accessibility need. There are people who have lifelong accessibility needs, but throughout our lives, our needs will vary. And when we, when we need information around accessible venues, we want this to be the place to help them. We have an ageing population, so these needs will get increasingly more prevalent and more advanced. And as a community, I think the attendance here tonight is a good indicator that as a community, we, we care more about accessibility and inclusion. You know, I don't think the accessibility needs have really changed that much you know, over generations, but I think we as a community care more about it. And I think that's a great testament to how many of you are here tonight you know, share, sharing an interest in this. So there are a few things that straight away anyone here with a venue can do to improve the accessibility of your space. Does anyone here actually have a venue that they make available for hire to other people? Yeah, great. Okay, well, this is perfect. You know, this is not an exhaustive list. There's a longer list in the in the flyer that we'll give to you when you leave tonight. But for those of you who like to read, this is a small list that you can you can take with you straight away and use to improve the accessibility of your spaces. So, first of all, well and evenly lit throughout. Entrances, ramps, <coughs> and corridors all meeting Australian standards. Accessible bathrooms. No clutter. This is really interesting. Over the last couple of weeks, I've been photographing venues in Bathurst with my team, and I've found a fantastic space that has a ramp <coughs> onto the stage. And, this, and the ramp is covered with boxes and equipment, and I thought, gosh, you've got such an ex you know, a fantastic accessible venue, but you know, it's not achieving what it needs to do because it's covered in clutter, but you know, spending half an hour would, would really change this space. Having space between furniture so that people in chairs and people with prams can walk through, people with walking frames, these are really simple things. Some of these things, you know, are such common sense, they're no-brainers, but if you can do these things in your own venues, it will make a world of difference to someone who actually needs it. And then just making sure that table heights and chairs are, are available for people in wheelchair users, chairs are available, and just understanding the laws regarding service animals and other accessibility. Matters. I'll let Bob talk more about that because he's really the expert on this, but any, any person with a layman's knowledge of this can make a difference to accessibility. So everywhere venues. We are the new place to search, book and pay for, online, for spaces online. And the project has been supported by Jobs in New South Wales. It's been developed over the past year with great feedback from Charles Sturt University and Sydney Olympic Park Authority, and it's part of the Sydney Sporting Incubator. And why did we build this? You know, what difference is it actually going to make to the communities in which it's available? Well, first of all, by knowing what spaces are available in your own town, people can do more and be more exactly where they are. So think of this beautiful space here, or Gunther's Lane, or you know some other beautiful sp the spaces I've seen at you know, at Verto and Feasibility and Marathon. People may not know to Google and find the website of these spaces, but these spaces are amazing. And if people know that they exist and they're easy to find, they'll be used more. 
So Everywhere Venues makes it easier for people to explore what's available in their own town. It makes it possible for them to be booked and paid for online so that you don't have to physically go there and make a booking. And it makes the usage of things much more transparent because you can see who's actually using them. And as a venue manager, you can see, well, are we actually getting the best value out of our assets? So this system, <coughs> it's all about making it easy. So it's scalable. And we're really starting something small in Bathurst that can turn into something really big. We've built everywhere venues, so it really could be the Airbnb of bookable spaces that aren't accommodation. At the moment, if you go online, you'll see you know, a whole stack of demo spaces. You'll see a handful of spaces. Um, the Bathurst Business Centre with Jennifer Gray, she is our number one fan and early adopter. She jumped on board as soon as we pushed the button. She's like, sign me up. So she was, she was the first one. We also have Harvest Cafe, which as you know, is a gorgeous venue down at the Visitor Information Centre. And in the next couple of weeks, more and more venues are going to be coming on board. But it really is something small that started here that can be big. When you go and look at the profiles on everywhere venue, you'll see, you'll see that we've got 360 degree photos. We've got fantastic accessibility filters that are that are quite detailed, certainly much more than all of it, everything else that you'll find online. Most venue directories will show, you know, is there a disabled car space, is there a disabled toilet? Having that level of information is really not enough for people to make an informed decision. And so we've been working to get all of that information onto our platform. We also show the real-time availability of spaces and you can book and pay for these online or you can ask for more information. Yep. So in terms of the accessibility filters, we spent a lot of time working on these and really there wasn't much of a standard to go by in terms of what information you should be collecting. We worked with Bob with the Bathurst Regional Access Committee. We worked with a number of high need support workers and we also worked with the Disability Inclusion Office at the Sport New South Wales to pull together the filters that would actually be meaningful for people when they're wanting to look at spaces. And it's quite exciting that previously there has been no national or global standard for accessibility for venues and we've developed one and you know it could be the new industry standard for how people consider the accessibility of venues so I hope that this really moves forward and gets used really widely. So if, you, if you're a venue manager here you might be looking at well why would I want to be involved in this project what's in it for me in addition to making the accessibility of your venues more obvious and accessible for people if you're a venue manager using our platform, it actually reduces your workload because you don't need to help people book venues yourself. They can do it directly online. If they do, it collects the payments for you. It also manages the invoicing, which is fantastic for community groups or if you've got volunteers or a wide range of people looking after venues. It can sometimes get confusing who sent the invoice and who made the booking. Through our platform, that issue gets eliminated. It centralises calendars so that everyone can have a snapshot of what's going on. And it provides real-time updates. So has anyone here ever used Airbnb? Yeah? Yeah? Oh, quite a few. Awesome. So when you use Airbnb, you need to check into a venue and check out. And I've had some really great feedback from accommodation providers that when you use Airbnb, the quality of your visitor behaviour improves because people are accountable for their behaviour and how they leave the condition of a venue or their accommodation. And we believe the same thing is going to happen when people are using other bookable spaces through our platform. People will need to check in and confirm that a venue is fit for purpose and that they don't have any issues. If they do have issues, these maintenance issues will be available in, you know, in real time. But also when people check out, they'll need to confirm that the venue is left in the condition they've found it. If your venue is available only as inquiry, then because people will have access to all the great photos and 360 degree imagery and all the accessibility filters and all the other information that's available, we think that they'll be really qualified leads for you if they're going to hire your venue. And we also provide the financial reporting directly through the platform. So it really does streamline a lot of work that community groups, councils, schools, small businesses with venues, people that have venues that is, you know, it's not really their core business, this is fantastic for them because all of this extra work gets managed. And if it is you know, your core business having a meeting, well, all of the tedious bits get managed by the platform. Oh, 
Yeah. So, so we're just getting started. As I said, if you look on the platform, there are a handful of venues. It's really early days. You know, it's exciting, but we needed to get started with a really great push. And so we're inviting all venue managers in Bathurst to get involved in the success of Bathurst. We have a fantastic team working with us, some of whom are actually some uh, some young people from Vivability in supported work placement. So accessibility really means something to them. And they'll be actually joining us in this project and going to map out the accessibility of venues in Bathurst. We're gonna get the account started for lots of venues. We'll turn up, we'll take photos, we'll do all the basics so that we can hand it over to you with almost everything done. And then we'll show you how to use it. So that's that's how we get that's how we're getting started. So we're going to have a number of community events. There, there's been a lot of interest in the Accessible Bathurst project, and I'm so grateful for all of you coming here tonight, but there, there are also some people who couldn't make it. So we're having some community events with our NDIS partners. So we have one at the Seymour Centre, another at Virto, and one at Vivability. And these events are really about helping the families and the clients of these centres and other people in the community learn how to use our platform to search for venues according to specific accessibility criteria. So I'll, I'll give you a handout to take home with you, which will have all the dates for that in it. Anything else? Okay, all right. Um, I must admit my PowerPoint has not worked out entirely as planned. I had another PowerPoint that was blank that had all of the logos of my supporters. So, so I will find that and acknowledge them appropriately. Uh, but you'll see them all on the back page of the, of the handout. So I might just, I might just grab one and publicly thank everybody. <laughs> so, so I might just, if, if I might just have a minute of your time, I'll just read out and thank everyone who's been involved. So, first of all, Fundability for funding the Accessible Bathurst project, Jobs for New South Wales, which has played <coughs> a large role in funding the actual development of everywhere, everywhere venues. Uh, Sen West Innovate and Charles State University, and the uh, NGOs partners that we have: Accessible Living Options, uh, the Bathurst Seymour Centre, the Bathurst Regional Access Committee, Glen Ray, Live Better, Marathon Health, uh, the 22Q Foundation Australia New Zealand, uh, the Australasian Association of Quality and Healthcare, the Neighbourhood Centre, Verto, Vivability, Headspace, and we also have some supporters from the Bathurst business community, including Bathurst Inspiring Women, Gunther's Lane, thank you for being here this evening, uh, the Upstairs Startup Incubator, uh, Bathurst Business Centre, uh, Key Spring Solicitors, Catarama Wholesale Packaging and Stationery, Suez, <laughs> The Persuader, 58 George, and, uh, and View Design. I might just mention 58 George. If you look around the room, you'll see some fantastic signage on the walls. And this, this is where it says book this space. So eventually when we have places available for people to book uh, online, but if you happen to stumble across a fantastic space and think, wow, I'd love to have an event here, what you'll be able to do is scan the QR code on this signage and it will take you directly to the venue profile on our platform. You can book it straight from there. So if you find something online, you can book it straight away. And if you find something in the real world, for example, you know, the Eglinton Tennis Courts, this beautiful space here, you could scan that and it would take you directly to the, to the venue profile. And, uh, and 58 George um, are very keen to you know, support people in getting their signage and, and make it easy for people to, to book venues and spaces. So thank you very much to all of our project supporters. Unfortunately, they weren't on my part. <laughs> anyway, so thank you for coming here tonight. Um, I'd like to invite Bob Trumming up to say a couple of words about the Bathurst Regional Access Committee. And, and as, as Bob's coming up, I'll just, I'll just leave you with these thoughts. Um, we think this is a really exciting project and, and you can help us. Uh, first of all, by looking at how you can improve the accessibility of your own venue. Straight away, that will make a difference to people. Uh, you can add your own venue to Every Venues and we'll help get you started. You can suggest a venue. If there's a great venue that you love, that you think that people would might, might like to know the accessibility features of, then please let us know and we'll deal with them directly to help get them on board. 
and spread the word. So thank you very much, everyone, and I'll hand over to Bob. Thanks, Zoe. Bathurst Regional Access Committee has been around for 30 years this year. Currently, we're handling 26 different matters, which is a lot for a voluntary committee, so it really keeps us busy. We have a, uh, four businesses. Um, we, we have a uh, Miss Business brochure, which I brought along tonight, which gives you some, some tips and ideas. And if you're looking at um, putting your business on this app, um, you can make use of us. Our advice is free. We charge for nothing. However, we do give a warts and all commentary on your business. So don't just expect the good stuff. We'll tell you what's wrong. We'll give you cheap alternatives on how to fix it the cheapest possible way. Or perhaps you may already be accessible and you don't just really know it. In regards to this app, I think it's absolutely fantastic. Back in 2009, I hit up the then Prime Minister, um, Rudd, when he was in Bathurst. And I wanted a scheme similar to the movies. If you go to the movie, the movies, no one would dare advertise a movie without a rating. It's law. And what I wanted was a national ruling or a national law for venues for people with disability. In other words, anything that's a venue, I'm not talking about an ad for a bottle of coke, but anything that's a venue, they either have to have a wheelchair logo or a cross for a wheelchair logo. And Rudd at the time agreed his, his father had a disability. And every time he goes away, just like me, I've got to make dozens upon dozens of phone calls to find out what's accessible. Are you sure you're accessible? So many people tell me they're accessible because from their desk in their motel, they know that they can get into a room. But like one place in Sydney, they forgot to tell me there was three steps from the main street. So, and this happens all the time. And with businesses, remember that it's just not one person you miss out on. A, if it's a family, like I've just spent the majority of three weeks in Canberra. So anywhere I couldn't go, I think there was about eight people hanging off us. They wouldn't have gone either. In functions centres, if you don't provide access for people with disability and or parents with prams and everyone else that it applies to, you may not just miss out on that one person, you may miss out on a booking for 100, 200 people. And so many people don't realise it. I've had a business in town tell me, oh, well, why should I provide access I never get people with wheelchairs in here. Um, the speaks for itself. So, with this app, and especially with the photos, I, I think more thoughts been put into this than what you can imagine, and what I could have ever thought of either. Um, things like 360 degree photos. If I can see that I can get into a place, um, that's going to make a hell of a difference than someone on a phone just telling me. So the overall principle of this app, Zoe, you've, you've really got to be commended. Short of me getting the disability logo on all ads, this is certainly the best thing that's happened for people with disability in Bathurst, apart from the Access Committee, that is. <laughs> the other thing in this brochure, um, how many businesses know that if you don't have access, or you might have access, but your front counter may not be accessible? How many know that uh, council will give you five grand to improve that access? There's some details in here. Now, the next round of grants starts 
I only got the advice today from council. Starts on um, July the 1st. So there's $15,000 cash that's up for grabs. You can get a maximum of $5,000 to pr improve access to goods or services. That may mean that you want to redo your entry or you might have heavy glass doors and you want to put electronic doors on. You may have an accessible business, but outside you have nighttime functions inside, but outside you don't have lights. We would look at that. And the whole aim is, with these cash grants, they are a council cash grant, understand that. But we can go and give you advice and we can tell you, yes, that would be applicable for a grant or no, you would have to alter it to this or that. And once again, our advice is free. And what happens with the cash grants, council gives them to the access committee, we decide who gets the money and makes our rec make our rec recommendations to council. Now there's no guarantee in the process. $15,000 and if you get five, up to $5,000, there could be six successful applicants or there may only be three. It just depends. But the thing I keep telling people, like we had a business last year, we gave them the grant, oh sorry, this year, we gave them the grant, they didn't use it. Now it looks like if a complaint goes to the Human Rights Commission, they'll be forced to put in a disability toilet, which we gave them the money for, but they're not gonna have access to the grants because they missed out. They didn't use the money we gave them. And once you get external bodies to Bathurst involved, they will say, you must put in a disability toilet. It's required. If you're unsure of what the act requires, ignore what builders tell you, for goodness sakes. They'll get you into trouble. We're, we're doing one with council now. Uh, we can't name names or anything, but Basically, the ratepayers are going to have to pay to fix the alterations to this building because the Australian building standards give you an out if it's a heritage building or if it's a multi-tenanted building. Believe it or not, if it's a multi-tenanted building, you must be accessible all in the interior, but the entrance doesn't have to be accessible. That's the law under the standards. However, under the Disability Discrimination Act, it has to be accessible through the entrance. This is the stupidity that we battle. Now, we won with a major shopping centre last year, and if we can win with them, we can win with anyone. And the whole thing is aimed at the Access Committee, not with picking on businesses, but supporting businesses to increase your customers. People with disability in the Bathurst area uh, sit around the 22%. That doesn't count people with uh, parents with prams and, and so forth. Um, you know, have a look around. It's amazing the number of people um, and who you know, use mobility devices. So <coughs> I'll tie it up because I told Amy you'll be here to one o'clock if, if I'm not given a time limit. <laughs> And I believe there's a group here who will shut me up within time. Toastmasters. <laughs> <laughs> they warned me they were going to clap if I spoke too long. But if you take a brochure, there's, there's no artist. So we're not going to pick on you if you can't do something because it's financially unfeasible at the moment. But maybe we can help you to reach a suitable alternative, but to increase your business just like this app is going to do for the businesses of Bathurst. People will be able to look up this app and instantly know, yes, because the provider of the service, the law got changed in 2009. It's not the person who owns the building, it's the provider of the service. So like if Zoe had this function here tonight and the room wasn't accessible, which she wouldn't do, of course, um, she would be responsible, not the people who own the building. Same goes for less 
least businesses. It's the business that provides the service, not the owner of the building. But we can tell you all that. Um, unfortunately for council, we know the law back to front and we now get great support from council. I've, I've really got to congratulate council. Yes, we had our minor persuasive arguments, but overall, I mean, look at the new adventure playground. There's a new section there and now get negotiating with us to have better disability swings instead of just the old favourite liberty swing, which to us is reverse discrimination because little kids can't use it unless they're in a wheelchair. So council are already working on suitable alternatives there. So thanks very much for your time. Take a brochure if you want one. If you need questions or if at any time through the year I'm on the internet, look up council website, we're on that, we're on the Bathurst community website. Um, we will answer any questions and provide you with any advice free of charge. Thanks, Zoe. Just while you're at the front, we actually have a, a cake to celebrate this fantastic project. So can I ask all the NDIS providers um, who are here this evening as well to come forward and we're just going to cut the cake and if you haven't had enough yummy snacks then I hope you'll all stick around for a piece of orange cake. Whilst people are uh, uh, assembling to cut the cake, um, I, I think we need to, uh, to tell you a little bit more about the uh, effort and energy that uh, this uh, young lady is uh, putting into spreading the word um, statewide and uh, ultimately nationally about accessibility uh, Bathurst and uh, everywhere uh, venue. Why? Because um, Brett Eldershaw up the back there and, uh, and, and myself and others are following her around the, uh, the, the, the countryside supporting and uh, observing and assisting uh, as, as, we, as best we can um, her and Isal's uh, efforts in promoting these uh, two uh, cohesive uh, programs. And, and best illustration, I think, is the last several weeks where you might think that because you're hearing from Zoe uh, tonight, this is the, uh, the, the, the grand reveal of the, of the process. Well, it is uh, legitimate. It, it, it is, is from the, uh, the point of view of the, uh, the, the structure and promotion of the, uh, the rollout. But in addition, Zoe has been uh, taking the, uh, the messages that, uh, that you heard uh, tonight in a truncated uh, form. Organisations in uh, Sydney, Canberra, Orange and uh, beyond already, Tamora. And in the process of uh, doing some of those presentations, already there's an almost national uh, understanding of, uh, of what these programs represent. For instance, Brett and I with uh, Zoe in Canberra last week at the uh, Australian Local Government Association annual convention. 2,000 people. The Prime Minister turned up and we rocked out the front and introduced ourselves to the, uh, to, to, to the PM. But importantly, Zoe was there every day of that, uh, that, that conference, pressing the flesh, talking to everybody that uh, cared to listen. Even on the, uh, the gala, was it the gala uh, <laughs> dinner on the, uh, the last, uh, last night, um, I was sitting on the, 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 the same table as, uh, as Zoe. She's pitching this story to people in uh, the Northern Territory. And uh, on other days, she was pitching the, the story to, to, to people in other states uh, around, uh, around Australia. On the weekend, the Regional Technology uh, Conference uh, or Expo up in uh, Orange. I called in for a couple of hours. There she was, waxing lyrical. <laughs> accessibility Bathurst and uh, everywhere uh, venues. So she doesn't take a rest. Once she grabs hold of uh, something, wants to make it uh, work, she's out there promoting it. And Bathurst is going to benefit from the recognition that flows from these uh, programs. And uh, there is every likelihood that, the, that this program will be uh, replicated uh, Australia-wide in due course. So, Zoe, congratulations. <laughs> Bring up the 
Okay. What would you? Can't join me at the table. <coughs> <coughs>